So now I want to talk about the Redux data flow. So here you can see we have our UI view. Okay, so this UI view basically is kind of like a form, kind of like a button, or maybe kind of like a page or um, you know a blog or something like that, right? This is our UI view that we render to our to our, cu our customers, right, or to our clients. So what happened is that user click on an action, where in this case maybe it's unclick event, or maybe it was some somehow that the user triggers a action, right, a, a events. So what happens is that it will basically dispatch this action. So you can see this action creator. So this action will basically returns a data, two type of data, which is the type as well as the payload. And what happened is that, you know, based on those two data, right, it will dispatch to the store. So the store will basically dispatch this action and then it will deliver to the reducer. And based on the type and the pay, uh, based on the type, right, it will basically update that specific reducer, right? And what happened is that inside the reducer, it updates the data, and then it returns the newly updated data to the store. So it basically updates the store, right? It basically updates the state uh, based on the which type that we're trying to update, right? Based on which type, uh, the action type, right? So that we can update the, the right data in our store, right? And then what happened then is that the store will have the updated state or the new state and we can be able to render that in our UI view, right? So you can see that this is kind of like our, you know, Redux data flow or data cycle, right? Where user dispatch an action, right? And then the action basically um, update it in our reducer and the reducer returns the update data in our store, right? Or updates our store and then the UI can be able to take the updated data render that in the UI view. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you in a Node console application using TypeScript to show you how to use a, to how to use or how to implement Redux in this console application. So here you can see, um, basically inside of our Redux folder, I have a couple things. I have actions, I have reducers, I also have store. Okay, and uh, here you can see I have a file called index.ts, which is what we have here, right? And uh, basically you can see start, we are trying to print what we have inside of our store. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna subscribe to the store so that every time when the store changes, we're going to, you know, const log or log what we have in our store, right? So maybe we can say current store right um, so and then here you can see what happened is that we try to dispatch an action okay we're trying to trigger an action and this add employee or this add amp is a action function right which takes a input you can see it takes the employee right which is the input and it returns an object which returns a type and a payload and this dispatch right which takes this data right here and what happened is that it delivers to the reducer and the reducer if we look at that so if we were to look at the add employee right you can see it takes the employee and returns an object right has a type has a payload like I mentioned and then you can see here instead of our reducer based on the type that we re that you know that we dispatched right we going to uh, updates our state or updates our store so you can see here based on okay for example add employee right so if we were to uh, put the action right here right so you can see if I were to look at here you can see this is an add employee and this add employee has it is a constant right so the type name is a add employee okay and then you can see here in the reducer Based on the type, we have a switch, right? Based on the type, you can see this is add employee. We're going to return the updated data, okay? And you can see here inside of our AMP reducer, it takes two things. It takes the state as well as the action. So if the state in this case is, you know, it doesn't exist, then we're gonna put an empty array. If it does exist, we're gonna update our current state, right? And then you can see we also have action. And you know you, you can see here this action has an interface, right? And this action you can see has a type, has a payload. And just and because of we're using TypeScript, so I'm just going to specify the type. And the payload can be employee, it can be any, 
right? So in this case, you can see here, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to update what we have in our state, right? So for the employee, um, you can see inside of our store, we have an employee, right? We have an alert, right? So you can see we're combining two reducers, right? So you can see we have two reducers and then uh, for emp reducer, right? You can see the type is add employee. And then basically we're going to take the data that we have now in our state. And then we're also going to add a payload, right? Current data onto it. So that's how we add employee, right? That's how we trigger the action. And then we're just going to update the data, returns the newly updated state to the store, right? For employee, right? And then you can see that's index. And the other one you can see here is going to be alert. And you can see add alert um, is a action. And then you can see for add alert, it takes a string and then we're returning a type add alert and then the payload as well. And then because this add alert, right, is a different type, you can see. And inside of our reducer, it basically check, okay, it's because, because the, the type is add alert, so it goes to here, right? And then what's gonna happen is that we're going to state.push, we're gonna push this payload, right, onto our current state, and then we're just gonna return it, and that's it. Okay, we're just gonna add a payload onto our state and returns or updates our state, right, for the alerts in our state, okay? And then you can see back to our index, you can see what's gonna happen is that we're gonna add employee, right? We're gonna add another employee, okay? As you, as, as you can see, this is a basically a class we're creating instance of an employee class, right? So for add employee, right? Um, you can see it's the same route, right? In this case, you can see it takes, because it's add employee, it goes to here, and then we're just going to add the current, play, uh, the payload onto the current state, pretty much, right? And uh, if we're back to the index, you can see, now we're trying to remove employee. So what that means is we're trying to call this function call remove employee, which takes the ID, okay? And then you can see here, this is the type, right? And it returns the type and returns the payload. So basically, you can see this remove employee well, basically returns an object and this object is a type em employee and the payload is an ID, right? An object ID. And that's why you can see in the reducer here, right? Um, for the I am ob action interface, you can see is any because either it's gonna be employee, right? Instance of employee, or it's gonna be an object which only has ID in it, right? So that's what we're trying to do. One is to add employee, the other one is to remove employee, right? So you can see here we have filter, we filter out ID that it doesn't equal to payload.id, okay? And then by default, if it doesn't, right, if the type doesn't match with those, then it will be returning this state, okay? Um, and then lastly, you can see we also have, you know, we basically we set out, a, you know, a timer, right? We're trying to remove alert, okay? Um, so you can see basically for this remove alert, you can see where basically um, call this function and returns a remove alert and then we have a payload and the payload is not or, or I should say null, right? Um, so it backs to this uh, reducer, you can see we have remove alert and it just shift. So it basically remove the first item that we have inside of our state, right? Okay, so that's basically it, right? So if we were to back to the index, you can see that's basically how we dispatch an action, right? Uh, we can also put this right here, right? We're trying to remove alerts. We don't have to use the set timeout. And then you can see, again, the unsubscribe basically means that we're, if we call it, we basically unsubscribe the store, right? And this subscribe basically, what it does is that every time when the store changes, right, we're trying to log the data onto the console. And that's it, so I'm just going to run the code. I'm gonna show you. So you can see this is what it looks like. And let's let's talk about it for a second, right? So you can see this is the store, right? And it prints what we have in our store. We have a couple of things, right? If we were to go back to store, you can see we have AMP, right? This is what we have inside of our store. We have AMP, which stands for employee. We have our alert, which stands for, you know, the alert 
uh, data, right? And then currently, at start, you can see we have current store, right? In this, in this case, we have current store. So current store, we add an employee, or in this case, we add an employee, right? And let's go, let's go to the, uh, the model just to show you what the employee class look like, right? So you can see we have a class. We have a couple properties here. We have a constructor that defines those property, right? And we also have an ID. So basically, every time when we add a ID, or in this case, create an instance of employee, we increase the counter by one, right? And then you can see here we have the ID is zero, okay? Um, so you can see we have nothing in our alert, okay? We're only adding the employee. And then we add the alert, and you can see that our store looks like this, right? So you can see we have still we have the employee and the alert is currently working, right? And then we add another employee. You can see we have two employees now in our current store, okay? Uh, and you can see the ID increments by one after we create an instance of an employee, right? And then you can see we also remove an employee, right? So removes employee with ID zero. So you can see the employee ID zero is removed. And then you can see then what's going to happen is that we're calling the remove alert function, which basically removes the alert, the first uh, alert that we have, right? So you can see now alert is empty in our store, okay? And then we unsubscribe from the, uh, the store, and then that's what we have.